8.9 cubic foot Whirlpool chest freezer that I picked up from Lowe's on clearance for 200 bucks. Uh, just had a little bit of damage. You can see a little bit of uh, scuffing on the front. So that took it from 268 to 200 dollars, and it's just the kind of bargain you need to find to reduce the cost of your kegerator project. What I hope to do is show you some of the steps I'm taking to convert this to a fully functioning kegerator with uh, four taps on the front, uh, and the freezer holds five corny kegs. I'm using pinlock kegs, but ball locks will fit also. Um, there will also be a little bit of room on the uh, compressor hump for some six packs or if I happen to get a smaller CO2 bottle like a five pound or a ten pound it'll probably fit on top of there. One of the first things you have to do is figure out how tall you have to make the collar. Now the collar is going to go between the chest body and the lid. And this makes it so you can install your your faucets, your shanks and also run your CO2 line from an external bottle without having to drill into the freezer because the freezer actually contains all its cooling coils in the walls of the freezer. And to get the collar on this thing we have to take the lid off so come around to the back where the hinges are and if you have your springs integrated into the hinge you're going to want to lock that out and for the whirlpools it's done by inserting a nail into this hole here. That way when you take your screws off the hinge doesn't pop open under the weight of the spring. So I'm going to use my drill driver here, cordless drill driver, and uh, these screws are square drive or flathead. So just take all the screws out and the lid will pop right off. Okay, I got both hinges off the back. You can see them on the top right here. So now the lid will actually just lift right off. There's nothing connected between the lid and the chest body. But if you bought a chest freezer that has a light inside on the lid, there's probably going to be some quick disconnect on the cable that uh, you'll have to undo before you can get the lid off. Now here you can see I flipped the lid of the chest freezer upside down and these usually have the the seal attached to the lid and I'm actually going to attach I prefer to attach my collar to the lid so that the faucets all rise up with the lid and get out of the way so I can heave my cornies that are full over the sidewall of the chest freezer. So I need to get this rubber seal off of the lid so I can reattach it to the bottom of my collar. And to do that, if you look behind, peel the seal back a little bit, you'll see all these little buttons. These are just quick push-in buttons and if you use a pry bar of some type stick it underneath here and give it a good pull you could get the uh, get the piece out and I really don't care if I break these if I do I'll probably just end up using some small wood screws to hold it back onto the collar so it's not a big deal I'm just gonna keep popping these out all the way around the seal uh, but you can see now that those clips were not only holding the seal in but also the uh, plastic cover that just makes a little uh, more finished looking instead of showing all this uh, extruded insulation. So we're going to want to take the seal off and then refasten the uh, lid back on. Now as I suspected this lip here comes a little too close to the edge and I want to have this sit nice and flush with the edge of the lid. So this bump out here is going to have to be cut off so that there's a flat surface for the collar to attach to. So this is pretty soft plastic. It's really thin. I'm probably going to use a utility knife right down in this crease so that uh, I'm left with a flat surface and it'll still allow us to reattach the, uh, the cover to the lid while remaining smooth on the edge. Alright, I cut off all those pieces of plastic that were sticking up on the edge and it's not beautiful but you can see how if I put this on the very edge here it clears it on the inside and I'll probably just put a bead of silicone caulk in there just to clean it up a little bit 
Next we're going to measure the length and width of the lid so that we know how to cut our pieces. For. Set the miter saw to a 45 degree miter and I'm going to cut all four pieces for the collar. Alright, I got all four pieces cut out now and you can see you know, 45 degree miters on them so they'll fit together nicely on the corners and um, next thing I'm going to do is lay out my uh, holes for the front part of the collar to, for drilling out for the faucets. The trick to getting a very smooth hole without any tear out through wood using any of the hole uh, drilling bit sets, whether it's a hole saw or a forstner or a spade bit, is to use a small pilot hole first, go straight through the center all the way through, and then drill about three quarters of the way through on this side and then flip the piece over and then continue the cut on the other side using the pilot hole as your reference. Uh, because if you keep pushing from one side, by the time you get to the very end, it's going to tear out a paper-thin chunk of wood. Now I'm assembling the collar pieces by clamping it to a flat surface that I know has a square corner. And that way I just clamp it uh, on its edge, make sure it's tight on both sides, uh, put a little bit of glue on the joint, and then I put some nails, some finishing nails in in this direction and also on this side. I'm using a uh, pneumatic nailer of course but you can uh, use some regular finish nails and a nail set. Okay I put a quarter inch round over on the corner here basically to match the contour of the lid here. It's got a round over so does the, the base of the freezer. Uh, I also put an eighth inch round over on every edge inside and out just so sharp edges down. Now the next step is to figure out how to attach it to the lid and what I've come up with is I have some thin sheet metal scrap laying around and I figure if I can screw this to the collar and have it hang out like that I can then screw through here into the lid. So as you can see basically made a gap there so that this strapping here or cleat will screw down into the uh, collar and then when I flip this back over to attach it to the lid uh, this won't protrude and create a gap everywhere else so. so you can see how the cleat matches up sits flush onto the lid and I'll put a few screws in through the cleats right into the lid and when I put the uh, cover back on the plastic cover it's actually going to sit right on top of these also, so when I put the clips back in, uh, that'll also hold it down.